All right, welcome back to the digital job site. If you're still with me on this long drawn out process, we're about to get to the meat of the deal here and uh, use SketchUp to show us compound miter angle settings for crown molding. And I know there's easier ways of doing this, but SketchUp can do it, so we're just going to talk about it here. Anyways, uh, we've got this piece of uh, um, complex crown molding um, that was created in uh, previous four videos. I can't believe it. And uh, so now we're just going to grab a piece of this crown molding like that by dragging uh, upper left to lower right. Uh, I select just the geometry that's enclosed in the box. And uh, I'm just going to select the move tool, control, and pull out a piece of molding. And we've missed a couple lines here, so I'm going to fill in spaces just real quick by connecting a couple points. And uh, let's see how this will, that'll create a face. And that face um, includes the angles that take to uh, miter this crown molding of this exact profile around 45 to in the corner. So, um, all we've got to do for, for the real part of this, throw another line in here to fill that top plane in. Uh, okay, so the, the miter angle, uh, pretty easy to, to figure. I'm just going to rotate this down so we're looking at the back of the crown molding. Grab the protector tool, index it to this back face. You can see it's black because it doesn't follow. Uh, any of the axes from any standard axes. So once it gets, once it turns black, I hold down the shift key, index it to this corner, and then I'm going to swing 90 degrees. Oops, yeah, I'm in the right plane there. It's laying on the back of the crown molding. You can see that there. It's not out in space. So um, the miter angle for a saw is, uh, again, we'll go to the black um, plane indexing, hold down the shift click the 90 degree mark and then go to our edge and that tells me that uh, for all practical purposes that miter saw angle setting to accomplish a 45 degree angle is going to be 14 degrees. There's a little wavy line so it's not precisely 14 degrees but um, that is definitely close enough to um, work with being as the, the corner you might be installing this molding in um, is quite likely not precisely 45 degrees either. Um, so that's how you get the uh, miter angle. And then, we'll just erase these guidelines. This is kind of the fun part. We want to know what the bevel angle is. And that is the angle between the back surface mold. It will be laying flat on a miter saw table. We want to know what the bevel angle is to accomplish this plane here on the end. Uh, and you can do a lot of um, complex things to get that angle, but I found it just a really a f slick way to do this. So just draw a box on the back of the molding and pull that box up. Oops, touched the wrong thing there. There we go. We'll pull the box up. So that box is laying precisely on our miter line and at 90 degrees to the surface. So all we do is grab the protector tool, index it on this black surface, hold shift, and uh, line it up with this edge and then swing it in. Oops, that didn't work quite right now. Here we go again, black surface. Click. I'm going to go 90 and just put in a 180 degree line here just for a reference. And then we'll do that same thing again. Grab this, pick up this line, and then swing it into this surface. And that's 17.8 degrees uh, for that. And I'm going to write down these. Um, angles because um, as soon as you move something they disappear from the value control box. So that's how to how to um, calculate the angles. It's the same process for whatever angle you draw um, and um, anything you you can just by changing your um, your path for the follow me tool you can use the same process to calculate any angle um, um, for your compound miters. Uh, I'm just going to do this uh, process again here for the, the 30 degree piece um, just to kind of reinforce the steps. Uh, I've selected the, the geometry we want to use. I'm going to fill in these little lines so we get planes on the end of our um, selection here. 
And we might as well get a 45 one while we're at it by filling this in. Get all these angles. There's that. Um, now for uh, the 30 degree. And because it's um, it's the opposite side of molding, we'll just pick a different the different point here. Grab the protector tool, lock it into this back face. I'm going to put our 90 degree mark in here first. There's that. Again, take, go from 90 degrees out to the cut. You got 9.2, 9.2 degrees for the miter setting. Uh, same process here. I'm going to get rid of these. Um, guidelines, draw a box on the back here, nothing to it. Pull this box up solely for the purpose of this calculation. Grab the protractor tool, lock it to a face, and I'm going to spin. Let's see, I guess. Um, a little confused because my uh, miter is going the other way. I'm gonna just kind of have to adapt here, okay? So we'll go 90 degrees. Oops. Let's see, 180. That gets me where we want to be. And then we'll just go back in, lock this inference, click onto this reference line, and then out to our surface. And that tells me 11.9 degrees on the miter and uh, with those angles um, that will produce a 30 degree outside corner. One more time on the process. Grab the protractor tool. And I'm kind of spinning around in space here. I'm sure this is making the viewers busy, dizzy. Um, here we go, 90 degrees and for a 45, 45 degree corner, we want a 31 degree miter. And what do we need for a bevel? Green line, lock in again. Make sure I'm getting the right point here in the 34.4 bevel. That's the process. Uh, if you watch this thing, all the steps of this, you are to be commended. <laughs> I hope my warning at the beginning was sufficient uh, to. Um, give you a heads up on how involved the process is. Some of the steps here are um, more interesting for seeing how SketchUp works than actually as a practical matter um, for, uh, for using this method um, for actually setting the miter angles. Uh, the other thing is um, using the photo match you can cr um, capture any chair rail, casing, crown molding, uh, any type of molding of any detail using the same process and then import those profiles into your models to give an absolutely um, accurate rendition. Uh, this would be very useful in something like creating a, um, a mantelpiece that had numerous moldings. You can add dentals and um, half beads and all sorts of things using this process. So um, thanks for uh, watching the whole process. If you made it through, um, you're commended. And uh, thanks again for watching.